Hello and welcome to So Fabulous. My name is Jennifer Taylor and today I'm going to show you how to upcycle old fabric and items of clothing into an iPad cover. So what I'm using here, I'm using scraps of fabric. Um, I'm also using my husband's shirt. You're going to need some wadding, um, scissors, paper scissors, pen, cotton and obviously a bobbin for your machine, tape measure and also your pin cushion. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is measure your device that you're going to be making your cover for. Um, now, my device is nine and a half by seven and a half. Um, but what you will need to make sure that you're doing is leaving enough um, gap for it to be able to go in and out of your sleeve comfortably, but also you're going to need seam allowances. Um, so I'm making my template here, just using um, normal dressmaking tracing paper. And I'm actually making mine 10 and a half inches by 12 and a half inches. That will give me plenty of room for my tablet to go in and out of the sleeve. Once you've cut that out, um, you're gonna use this later when you start actually combining your patches and scraps together. Okay, so because I'm making the um, cover for my husband, I'm actually taking one of his old shirts um, and there's a bit of detail that I want to make sure I get in my pocket. So here is the area that I want to take and use for the front of my cover. So with no hesitation, I'm just gonna cut these. I'm sure you all wanna do this at home. I'm not gonna need that. So I'm finished with that for now. Okay, so now we've got all of our fabric and we're gonna start compiling it to make our patch. Now we're got, not going for quilter of the year here, so it's crazy patch, any size will do. Um, but like I said, what I really want to do is make sure I keep this detail on the pocket. Um, so I'm just going to cut this to size. So all I'm doing here now is just trimming down uh, my patch so it uh, fits nicely on my paper copy. Making sure I'm leaving enough space for a seam allowance. Well, my seam allowance isn't going to be very big at all. All I'm going to be doing is using the edge of the foot as my seam allowance guide. So you shouldn't have nice straight lines when you're doing your stitching. So once you've got all of your pieces cut out, we just need to start combining them together. So the easiest way to do this is right sides together. So you can see this is my front of my pocket. This is the right side of my fabric, right sides together. And now we're just going to go to the sewing machine. Okay, um, so I've threaded my machine and the bobbin with a plain multi-purpose cotton, any colour will do, but I'm just going to go with white. Also, I've not bothered to uh, pin my fabric together because they're such small pieces, you should be able to handle them quite easily under the machine. So we're just going to run a very simple straight stitch using the edges of the foot as the guide. So now what I'm going to do is repeat that on the other side using my other off cut of fabric. Again, right sides together and just repeat. So there we have our first piece of patch ready to construct other pieces to get the big piece which we know will fit our paper pattern later. So I've gone ahead and done that already with these other pieces. So I just want to get those together. So using the same principle as earlier where we're putting right sides together, I want this piece to be my central piece. So ideally what you'd want to do here is, is press these open using an iron, but you can actually just finger press rather than keep having to get up and down from the iron. So I'm just using the edge of my thumb nail and just running it down the seam line. And as you can see, they're just, they're so small because you use the edge of the foot as your guide. They're not going to be very bulky at all. Okay. Again, I'm not going to bother pinning this, but if you feel more comfortable doing that, then feel free, free to pin. So again, I'm just repeating the process, doing a straight line of stitching using the edge of the guide. And there we have our front piece with a pocket. Okay, so I finished my first piece of patch. You're going to need to repeat that process because obviously you need a front and back to your cover. But then we're going to move on to the wadding. So here's my wadding now. I'm just going to cut it to size. So I'll just place that on top. And then I'm going to take my paper pattern that I've cut previously just to make sure that they're both going to be the right size. Now I know that this is slightly bigger than I need it to, which is great. So I just need to trim that to size. So if you just want to pin it in place.
And so I can use scissors, just cut it out. Okay, so now I've cut that out. You can see that I have two pieces exactly the same size, which will give me my front and back of my tablet cover. Okay, so what we're going to need to do now is cut some material for the lining of the pad. Um, now I'm actually going back to the shirt. So this part I want on show, and then I need this to cover the back. Again, making sure that I've got this button in the middle. Then we just need to go ahead and cut. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing now is just quickly running a, a row of top stitching across just to secure my uh, backing to my um, patchwork. What I've done is I've just added a few pins in place just to keep it um, attached to the wadding and the backing and I'm just going to add a row of top stitching here just to secure my lining to my patch. Okay, so we need to be a little bit careful here because obviously I have buttons in place. Um, but like, I'm going very close to the edge, so we should be able to get through without having to take the buttons off because I want to keep that detail. Just removing the pins as we go. Just the last pin. Okay, so as you can see, I've finished the top stitching on both of my pieces now. Okay, so the next step we're going to do, um, I want to add these together just matching up my edges pieces and taking your pin cushion just pin in place again I'm just doing the corners here okay so what I'm going to do now is just do a very simple straight stitch going all the way down to the three sides leaving this area open this is where the pads actually going to go in I'm just going to make this a bit of a bigger stitch um, it's hard to see with the layers here but I'm actually using a 1.5 seam allowance and what I'm actually going to be doing as well is increasing my stitch size because you've got quite a few layers in here. The smaller the stitch, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult to get through. So I'm just going to increase that. I think four should be enough. I'm just going to secure it with a back stitch. Okay. I'm actually going to put my needle down now and just spin it. And then go on the bottom. Again, keeping the needle in the fabric. Spin it. Needle up. And you're done. Okay, so what we're going to need to do now is just measure your cover because um, we're going to be creating some binding out of this fabric. Um, so just simply take your tape measure. I'm going to go into inches. I'm just going to measure it from here down to this point. I'm going to keep my finger there to the next point. Keep my finger there up to here. Mine is 32 and a half. Um, obviously yours may differ depending on how big your um, tablet is. Um, but once you've got your measurements, you need to take your fabric and cut it to size. So obviously you want it to be 32 and a half with a bit of seam allowance. So go 34, 35 inches, that'll be perfect. And I also need you to cut this to two and a half. So I've done this already with this piece and I've done it to a two and a half width. And now we're going to make that into a binding. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I, I, I'm doing it on the straight. So this isn't a bias binding, this is straight binding. And all you need to do is put the wrong sides together, meeting the edges and iron. And you need to go all the way down on that. Once you've done that, you just need to bring them into the centre part here. So you've already made the crease line with the iron, which is directly halfway. And you bring in the edges to that crease line. Now you can get um, equipment to do this for you, but I prefer to do it by hand. And then you just repeat on the other side. And then 
one last press, going back to the half mark. There you have your straight binding. Okay, so I have my binding. Now what I want to do is get this pinned to my pad. Um, so taking the first fold, I'm just going to leave a little excess here so I can fold it under and make a nice edge. But I'm literally going to be pinning it to that stitch line there that we did earlier. So just taking the pin. There's quite a few layers here, so you need to be a bit forceful. So you're almost pinning in the ditch. So you go all the way down. Again, just making sure that you are pinning and not folding over any of the other fabric. So we're okay. And then when you get to this corner here, don't pin right down to the edge because we're going to be showing you how to mitre that corner. And then you just need to take it to the sewing machine. So I'm just placing my pad under here. Now, as we talked about earlier, I don't want you to go right into the corner because we're going to need that space to do the mitering. So if you want to come down about a centimetre from your stitch line, you know where that is because you can see from here, putting your feet down. And you'll be able to feel from your finger here where your actual stitch line is and that's where we're going to be going. Remember to remove the pins as you go. I'm just going to secure that with a back stitch. very end of securing with another back stitch. Okay, so now I'm going to be doing a mitered corner. So you just want to open your binding out, not this part, just the first fold. And you almost want to be coming back on yourself. And then at this point, you need to fold over, creating a corner. So you can see here in the corner now, we've got a nice clean edge going into the next stitch line. And obviously we need to pin again. So just taking your pin, again pin in the ditch, all the way down. We can tidy this area up later, but at least we know we've got enough fabric to go around the mitered corner. Okay, so it's back under the machine. Okay, so again as before, you want to just come away about a centimetre from the line. So you're just repeating what we've just done. Again, just removing the pins as we go. So again, when you come to the corner, you don't want to be sewing right to the edge. You want to leave a little gap. So just secure this with a back stitch. So it will look loose on that side, but again, we'll be tidying that when we come to do the back side of the pad. Okay, so I've gone around the three sides with my sewing machine, leaving the gaps that we discussed earlier. And now we're actually gonna do some hand sewing. Uh, now I know it's a laborious task, but it will give you a really clean, lovely professional finish. So I'm just gonna show you how to do this on the one corner, just to save some time. So I'm gonna go with this side. Now normally you'd obviously start from the top, but just for the purpose of showing you how to do the corner, I'm just gonna start here. So you need to bring this over, making sure that your fold is still at the centre point, bringing it to your stitch line. Now if you want to stick a few pins in, it might just make it a little bit easier when you come to do your hand stitching. Okay, so um, I've pinned this in place, now I'm just going to do the corner. So you can see here that the fold is going on my right side. So on this side, I want it to be on my left side so it's not so bulky. So you've got the corner there, and then you just fold it over, like so. And just pin in place. Giving you a nice cornered edge. So now you've pinned that in place, what you're gonna need to do is do some hand stitching. Um, so again, I'm just going with the white cotton. And what we're going to be doing here um, is the ladder stitch. Um, so I'm just going to pop it in behind. So this is a bit tricky to show you, but what you need to do is just get just in front of your stitching. 
And then where the fabric folds here, you're going to be putting your needle in that fold and popping out the other side. But you want your stitches to be adjacent to each other, so almost like a ladder, hence ladder stitch. And then you just continue that all the way around. So let me just do a few stitches for you. And then you'll see that they'll be pretty much invisible. So I've just done a few stitches, I'll let you guess where I started from. So we're going to continue that all the way around. Like I said, it is a laborious task, but it will give your pad a real professional finish. Okay, so I'm at the corner now and my needle is facing me. So I'm going to just pop it through that fold there. And then what I'm actually going to do is take it to the other side. I'm just going to fold it around to make it easier. So if you remember, we didn't stitch all the way up to the corner, so you can see that it's still open. We're going to need to close that side also. I just want to show you how to close the mitered edge. So you're just going to be going through. Again, same sim similar stitch using the ladder stitch, but you're actually going to be going through to the other side. and going through the crease of the corner. And again, go through the other side. And again, through the crease. So one that's pulled tightly, you shouldn't be able to see the stitches. Okay, so I've done uh, my hand stitching all the way around um, my bias and I'm coming towards the end of the pad. Um, now, obviously, I, I cut this strip a little bit longer than I needed to, which is always best. Um, so I'm just going to trim that slightly. Okay. So for the edge, um, what you're going to need to do is fold this over, keeping the fold in the fabric, and then fold it over again. Just tidy that up. So you can see you have a nice squared edge. And then just continue with your ladder stitching to finish. So I'm just at the edge now. This is the final few stitches. And what I like to do is just re-thread that back through your bias binding. It doesn't matter where it comes out. Don't need that pin anymore. And just trim your thread. Okay, and there you have it, your finished cover with Mansha pockets.